So um, I talked about some of these carbon fiber patches that are used in traditional bike manufacturing. This is a dry carbon fiber patch in that there is no matrix. This is not technically a composite yet. This is just a bunch of fiber. So I would have to add uh, a second component to make it a composite. I would add some resin or uh, in this like, a, like think about it like for thermoset, a glue or an epoxy to this. And that would, could be a couple ways. I could literally squeegee wet glue onto this and then put it into my bike mold. Or I could um, squeegee wet glue onto this and then let it cure just a little bit so that I can hold it and uh, kind of like uh, take it like a, a, and that's what's called a pre-preg. So I can take my pre-preg that already has the glue applied and then put it into my mold, or I can put the liquid resin onto it and then immediately put it into my mold. Both of those have the problem of that you're dealing with a thermoset, which has some pluses and minuses. Uh, thermosets are really hard. Um, they're easy to form because they're basically liquid before you start curing them. And um, so it's easy to get the thermoset around each of these individual carbon fibers, uh, the wet out or infusing of this carbon fiber fabric. But um, they also have a lot of manufacturing constraints. That thermoset needs a lot of heat and pressure in order to cure or, or harden. So that means that I need to have a big um, steel mold and I need to take my mold and I need to put it under pressure somehow and I need to have all of this happen at high temperature as well. And this is a lot of, uh, all translates in manufacturing to a lot of tooling. You need a lot of stuff in order to make a, any individual configuration of bike frame. And that means that it's really hard to customize a carbon fiber bike that is made out of thermoset. Because let's say I want to make a larger frame, I need to kind of redo all of this tooling and that's just too expensive. Nobody, nobody does that. And that's why a lot of the carbon fiber frame manufacturers you'll see will make maybe three sizes or five sizes or something like that. Or you gotta pay an arm and a leg for your custom sized bike frame because you literally have to have somebody go cut a you know, 500 pound chunk of steel into a mold for your bike. And uh, that takes a lot of time and uh, material as well. So contrast that with what we do with Superstrata. We have no molds. We have what we call a scaffold or a, a build surface that um, essentially just eliminates some of the print time and we build up moldless, and that's because we're using a thermoplastic. We can have devised the process for additive manufacturing whereby I can take this thermoplastic, which is uh, doesn't cure, it just part, it, 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 mel it melts and freezes. So essentially I weld this thermoplastic as opposed to curing this thermoset. So I can do all of this outside of an oven and without tooling or very minimal tooling. So that means that I can um, make every bike a little different because if I don't have a tool um, and the robot's doing all the manufacturing, well, I can just tell the robot to do something slightly different each time. That way you can get a frame that's a little stiffer or a little bigger or a little smaller or um, whatever other uh, load cases you want to put on it. If uh, you are a heavier person, you can have a stouter frame. If you're a lighter person, you can have a more nimble frame or like whatever, whatever you want. Uh, just another program for the robot. And Material and process engineers like myself spend all of our waking hours essentially making sure that the rope, what the, whatever the robot does, matches what the software thought it was going to do. So we characterize the um, material performance of this this filament, um, both before when it's just in this raw form, and then after we weld it. We want to make sure that that weld is strong. So that means that we characterize the tensile strength, compression, modulus, fatigue. Uh, flexural strength is, of course, very relevant to bike frames. Um, a lot of folks in the comments were talking about, well, what about the flexural strength? And we characterize that and then put that as an input into the software model. So I can say, uh, software, your uh, the user has requested a frame that has a certain uh, lateral stiffness based on this geometry that I feed you. And the software says, oh, great, I know how to what to do with that and it says you need to put one fiber like this and one fiber like this and one fiber like that and then the robot goes off and does that and you have a frame that matches whatever your load criteria were and then of course we take that frame and we send it through a whole bunch of testing right so uh, we want to make sure that our robots are behaving themselves and so we send this um, many uh, we will make frames we'll make test articles test coupons we call them and uh, break them and then feed that information back into the software and that lets the software get smarter. So we have this kind of feedback loop of learning that's going on in the software to make sure that um, everything comes out as expected. 